robbers have carried out an armed raid, stealing almost three tons of gold bullion. So our friend says you can shift it. You could handle a job like this, and I'd have heard of you. You only hear about the people who get. There is a fixation of the common person with criminals. These are people that do things outside the norms of society. They don't play by the rules. Sometimes it's because they were raised that way. Sometimes it's because they despise the unfairness of the rules. And other times it's because they want chaos. Whatever society's obsession is with criminals, we are fascinated by bank robbers. People who rob from banks and other money-making institutions. For the most part, we in the general public see these as relatively victimless crimes. As long as the robbers don't hurt anyone, banks, companies, etc. are usually covered by insurances. And those companies have the money to recover. But those bank robbers did what the rest of us wish we could do. Throw rules out the window, go get money, and experience the pleasures of life without the need to work again. The British series The Gold gives us insight into these types of criminals and the vast amount of people that helped a simple robbery go international. Now, I love bank, casino, company, robbery stories. I love that type of stuff. They're fascinating to watch. So I am a main target audience member for this type of series. Always want to go ahead and actually know that perspective. Just know where your review is coming from so that you can make an educated decision on where their mind is at watching this series. Because I watched the first two episodes of brand new content on streaming platforms to see if it's worth your time. I watched so you don't have to. If you like how that sounds, do me a favor. Click like, share, subscribe. And now, let's review The Gold. The Gold premiered on Paramount Plus in September of 2023. It has six episodes that go roughly about 55 minutes each. It stars Hugh Bonneville as DCI Brian Boyce, Jack Loudon as career criminal Kenneth Noy, and Imon Elliott as Tony Brightwell, a low-level gold specialist. The tale goes like this. It's a drama series inspired by true events surrounding the 1983 Brinks Matt robbery and the remarkable story that followed. Simple story, that's the caper. What are my expectations for this? Number, number one, first and foremost, give me a good heist. I want a heist where uh, there's complexity to it, that there is, you know, planning, there is some. Uh, cool shenanigans going on in there to try and that things might not go go well or whatever but ultimately i do want the bad guys to get away with it so that you know there's something really cool about it um it just loving going and actually seeing the heist aspect of it number two is a plan and a story on how they kind of get away with it so the aftermath effect of it do they get away and how do they get away how do they plan on doing that and does and does that last? Do they get caught or anything like that? I really like to see that story play out to see the aftermath. Because it's one thing to plan a robbery, but if you get caught, what's the, what's the point of it? So I'm really like going and actually seeing what's that furtherance of, of after the robbery. And lastly, of course, we want characters that we care about. It doesn't matter that they're villains or dastardly robbers or anything like that. We want characters that we empathize with, that we like, or whatever the case may be, so that we can go ahead and actually cheer for them going and actually getting paid. So... That's what I have for my expectations. Let me dive deep in and give you some of my thoughts about this series. Now, the series starts on the heist itself. So there's nothing in the realm of planning for it. We don't see any of the planning. We see them go right into the heist itself. It's very much like most heist movies, and it doesn't evolve or elaborate on anything crazy. Again, this is taking place in the early 90s in Britain, so... You're not going to see a whole lot of technology based or anything like that, trickery or anything like that. It is a plan's already been in place. We're going ahead and actually get right into the robbery. For this one, it was, you know, knowing about inside knowledge, going ahead and actually timing and resolve to pull off this particular robbery. Now, most of this story of this series, like 95% of it, is surrounding how the original robbers intend to hide, launder, invest, and spend this $39 million worth of gold bullion, which would kind of translate into roughly about 90 million in today's money. Now this involves the people to move it, 
there's certain specials that they need to get in there, protection from officials, um, being in hiding, they have to refrain from spending, all these different portions in order to make sure they don't get caught. It's basically slow playing the system until the gold is no longer possible to trace back to the original folks. So there's some time here where they need to go ahead and actually do what they got to do to set it up to go ahead and actually get this gold in a, in a way where it is no longer traceable. And it's a race against the clock between them and the authorities that are trying to seek them out. It's a character driven series as you get to understand the various people involved, both on the criminal and the authority side, what the thoughts and motivations are, and as I said, the race to uncover the parties before the trail totally goes cold and they can't prove anything. Now, it's an interesting story. The way that this series is laid out is not particularly entertaining. The personal lives and people involved aren't really compelling. And there's a lot of explaining, talking, and mapping out everything. It feels a little detailed in the minutia of everyone's lives. It really, perhaps the story should have been condensed to a high level points of highlights rather than a minutia because what we're given just doesn't entertain me enough. Now, the acting is pretty decent in this. And I think everyone did a good job on their roles. In this, they're trying to convince you of the motivation of some of these characters. And some are done better than others. But overall, it's kind of like a decent acting job. Nothing crazy, but some are better at conveying the, the motivations than others. But there's really no one character that stands out in this. And that's another thing that makes this series fall a bit flat. No one stands out. No one that you supposedly root for. And, and on either side, honestly. And it's kind of it's kind of crazy, but the acting is done in a way that it is a run of a run of the mill type of thing, meaning like it's like everyday people. And I get that that's where it's done, but you have to do with a little pizzazz, you have to give me some entertainment value, empathize with people or give me some motivations that are a little bit more risque or a little bit more of like, okay, I understand where that guy is coming from. The execution of acting was decent, but no one set themselves apart from the pack. That's kind of where I'm at with the acting. Some other random thoughts that I had about this particular series. An early look at early, early 80s UK is cool. Retro stories are always fascinating, especially in another country other than your own. The cars, the tech, the clothing, the hair, it was all fun to see. The police and detective work pre-digital age was way more difficult. Tracking down people, finding out information, where they have been, where they could be at, that was work. These folks really did real detective work. And it was very interesting to see all of that put into place. But I've given you all that kind of good stuff. Let me give you my verdict for this. For people that are really into high stories, into uh, just the overall aspect of watching a heist and watching a heist watching the plan out for and all that kind of good stuff I'm gonna go and actually say I'm gonna go and actually say watch two episodes this is large part to the fact that the inter this is large part to the overall story here this brings Matt robbery was an interesting story and the fact that episode two is where I believe the series does move things forward in an entertaining way as much as it can I'm not totally convinced that the rest of this series will be significantly better than the second, but I almost feel that if it's, a, if it's as decent as the second, it wouldn't be a bad watch, but you got to at least get to that second episode. And I think mains are really going to be, watch those first, watching those first two episodes will really determine if you want to go and actually continue on with the rest of the series. For casual fans, fans that are not fans of like heist movies or anything like that, unfortunately I'm going to say it's a skip it. For people that aren't into heist movies or robbery stories, I think you'll be bored of it really quick. <clears throat> the points of this story that do seem interesting probably could have been told in an interesting way or entertaining way, but this series doesn't really deliver it. And so for casuals, I'm going to say it's got to be a skip in. So for mains, watch the first two episodes. For casuals, I'm going to say this is a skip it. And that's what I have for The Gold on Paramount+. Plus. Check it out.
Even allowing for inflation, the haul is twice as big as the great train robbery. Stealing the gold was one thing, but the really difficult part was selling it. The only way that I appreciate you staying for the entire review. I know it's long, but I like that for you. You went ahead and actually gave me that love. Do me a favor, click like if you, eh, this was a pretty decent review. Go ahead and actually subscribe if you really like the review and you really want to come back for more. And if you got some other time, go ahead and actually check out one of these other videos or the other reviews that I've done. But until the next time, I'll holler at you. Take care of yourself.